Hello dear students and uh, the members of the fraternity of medicine. Here is another short topic related to the digestive tract. Uh, it's about the motility of the gut. And then I'm going to specifically talk about the migrating motor complexes. Uh, if you look at the motility or movements uh, in the small intestine, and let me uh, just say here that uh, movements of the small intestine and large intestine or colon are similar in uh, many aspects. Uh, colon in addition shows hostrations which are not seen in the, in the small intestine. But apart from that, most of the motility is similar. So, having said this, now let's see the motility of the gut. It should be seen uh, in two contexts. In the fed state, how is the motility in the digestive tract? And then in the post-absorptive state or fasting state, when the intestines are absolutely empty and uh, it's a fasting state, how the motility happens. So, in the fed state, there are two types of movements and I am uh, talking on a very basic level. In the fed state means after eating foodstuffs, there are two types of movements in the digestive tract, particularly in the small intestine. There will be peristalsis, which are thought to be the propulsive movements for the sake of propulsion of the foodstuffs. And uh, the other type of contractions are called as segmentation contractions. These are uh, for the purpose of mixing. Mixing of the foodstuffs with the digestive juices in the small intestine. Now, coming to the fasting state, in the post-absorptive state, you know, uh, all of us experience uh, this uh, the so-called hunger pangs. If you all have been uh, fasting for too long, there are cravings or hunger pangs. So, uh, those hunger pangs related to the motility of the gut and the exaggerated version of those hung hunger pangs in the fasting state would be called as migrating motor complexes. So, in the fasting state, the motility of the gut, apart from of course hunger pangs which I mentioned just now, felt generally in the pit of the stomach or uh, near the center part of the abdomen. There are migrating motor complexes which are observed in the intestines. Now, what are these migrating motor complexes? First of all, remember they are be, they are being dis described as the housekeepers of the intestines, housekeepers of the gut, because they they are essentially performing the function of housekeeping. You know, after uh, having eaten the foodstuffs, there is digestion and absorption of those nutrients. And after that, whatever are the remnants or uh, food debris or uh, some digestive juices which are remaining, all that is cleaned up by the migrating motor complexes. It, the, all those things are cleaned up uh, and therefore it's called as a housekeeping function and uh, MMCs are called as housekeepers of the gut. Particularly, uh, the particles which are more than 2 centimeter diameter, I mean slightly larger uh, particles, they are cleared by the migrating motor complexes because there are sphincters to be negotiated and those particles are to be cleared from the intestines. 
So it is a housekeeping function basically. Uh, there are uh, three phases of uh, MMCs but before that let me just say what is the difference between an MMC, MMC related contraction and a peristaltic wave. Look migrating motor complex means at any one point in the digestive tract a complex starts, a motor complex starts and uh, a contractile ring will start from that point and will travel over the entire length of the intestine. This is unlike the peristaltic wave because peristaltic wave after uh, having eaten the foodstuffs, peristaltic wave will travel only a few centimeters of the intestine and it, and it dies out. The contractile ring that starts at one point as a part of the migrating motor complex, that contractile wave, peristaltic wave uh, of the MMC, I am saying, it travels over the entire length of the intestine from that point on. So that is one difference between an MMC wave of contraction and a peristaltic wave that happens after the eating of foodstuffs. Right. And uh, it is a motor complex that happens at one point. It is a 90 minute cycle basically on an average. This complex forming at one point in the digestive tract, it is a 90 minute cycle. So generally it shows three phases. First phase is called as the quiescent phase. Quiescent phase or quiet phase about 70 minutes. That is the phase 1. And what happens in this phase is just there are slow waves. There are slow waves, you know the electrical activity in the smooth muscle of the gut slow waves followed by spike uh, at the top of slow waves there are spikes. So here there will be slow waves but they are not followed by any contractile activity. You will just find the electrical activity in the form of slow waves for the first 70 minutes and therefore it is called as a quiescent phase. Then phase 2 is a phase of irregular contractile activity, irregular contractions means uh, some slow electrical waves will be followed by contractions and some slow waves will not be followed by electrical uh, uh, by the uh, contractile waves. So irregular contractions start happening in the phase 2. Uh, let me tell you bile flow in the duodenum occurs in the peak of phase 2. So bile flow occurs in the phase 2 of the MMCs. And third phase, well this uh, phase also lasts for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then phase 3 which is called as the activity front. Meaning now there will be regular contractions means each slow wave, each electrical wave or each slow wave will be followed by the contractile activity or contraction. So that is called as activity front for last 5 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes of that 90 minute cycle. And uh, as I mentioned that the contractile ring will appear from that point where this migrating, uh, where this motor complex is acting right now, let us say in the first part of duodenum. Contractile ring will appear and will travel over the entire remaining length of the intestine. So it will clear out all the remaining enzymes, food debris or any particle which could not be cleared previously, all that will be cleared and therefore as I said it is called as a housekeeper of the intestines. So, but just remember there are three phases, first phase 70 minutes where 
only electrical activity in the gut, no contractions. So it's called as a quiet phase or quiescent phase. Phase two, irregular contractions for 10-15 minutes where some slow waves followed by contractions, some slow waves are not followed by contractions. And then, yeah, and, and, and as I mentioned, bile flow occurs in the uh, phase two, peak of phase two. And then phase three, last five minutes will be activity front. So very regular contractions. Uh, so that's uh, the MMC. And then this has happened at one point, this motor complex, then it migrates, it shifts to some other part. I mean, as I said, suppose it was first part of duodenum for the 90 minutes, then it will shift or migrate to some other part, maybe second part or third part of duodenum, something like that. So it's called the migrating motor complex. Yeah, motor complex happening at one point for 90 minutes and then shifting to some other point in the gut. Uh, now, what is the clinical application of this? Look, the MMC contractions are strengthened by a hormone called as motilin. MMC contractions are strengthened by the hormone motilin. It promotes those MMC contractions. And the drug that binds to motilin receptor is erythromycin. Erythromycin, although you know, it's, uh, it belongs to the macro lead group of antibiotics. Although it's an antibiotic, but it has been shown to bind the motilin receptors and therefore it exerts the action of motilin. What is that action? It promotes and strengthens the MMC contractions and therefore erythromycin can be given as a prokinetic agent because it has been found to have uh, this action on motilin receptor. So, that is a quick and brief review of uh, the motility of the gut and particularly the MMCs, the housekeepers of the intestines.